Good morning. Welcome to our first PALS podcast on May 14th, 2020 at a.m. I woke up early for this, so y'all better listen. My name is Esther Palomino, and I'm a liberal studies student in the general track with a constitution in Spanish. My name is Bernardo. I also work at the PALS office, but I'm a math major going into teaching. And my name is Jess. I'm a liberal studies student. I'm a senior this quarter and my concentration is in special education. Uh, today we are going to talk about Juan Delgado. He is a retired CSUSB alumni. He's taught and inspired students for over 30 years. He's a local artist in San Bernardino whose work speaks for itself and the community that he loves. Uh, Burns, I know that you took a Chicano literature class with uh, Delgado, why don't you tell us about that? Your experiences and how you felt. I, the I took, um, I believe two winters ago, or it was last winter. Not, don't remember what quarter it was, but yeah, it wasn't my first time meeting him, but it wasn't my first time taking a class that he taught. Yeah, and it was really mind blowing because coming from like a Mexican family, it's like. Yeah, it's like you you think you know what you seen like what you lived through, but after taking his class, he pretty much opened my mind to things that I was blinded to even though I was around it. Yeah. So it was like it was pretty insane the way he taught too. It was like it's like he had a plan and it just adjusted itself as as the class went along. But yeah, it's like overall his the class was amazing. Um, it was mind blowing, and um, I really learned a lot from him. I remember there was um, we had a conversation one time about how you never noticed like how often like your family. You said your grandparents or your parents the other day are always needing to do something, or always trying to find something to do. Like oh, yeah. Sit still. Why, why don't you talk about that for a minute? So there is a, a book that we were reading in his class, and um, he pointed out something that if you if we refocus on the the Mexicans, like they they don't when they get laid off, they don't stop there. They look for jobs, right? Mm -hmm. So when when it comes to that, it's like, I'm like, yeah, it's like, that's, I thought it was like, comments, like, yeah, er, even other people do that, right? But, um, knowing, like, the time when my grandpa got laid off, it was like, he was working on other stuff, not only at different places, but here at the house as well. Mm -hmm. So, it was like, that really brought me, it was like, whoa, it was like, what the heck? And right now, it's like, in the time that we are, like, quarantine and stuff like that, like, we can't le go anywhere it's like he's still looking for something even my grandma like yeah it's pretty insane how like the ideas that he taught is like could still be related to the time we're um we are living right now yeah especially with with covid you know on the rise i'm sure it's it's difficult you know to get out and find work that can actually be done safely you know. Yeah, that's the crazy part. It's like honestly, it's like I'll be honest. Like I would, I didn't notice anything without him opening my eyes to my surroundings. Uh huh. So it's like I honestly give the thanks to him for teaching me the way it is. Yeah. Uh, but either way, it's like I know that you took a class with him as well. How was that experience with with him? Yeah, yeah, I did. I took um, a skip class with uh, with Delgado with one. Um, he, um, God, <laughs> I just remember sitting there like in class, uh, just mind blown <laughs> with like every single thing that he would say. It almost made me feel like. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I, there was never a point when he taught that I felt dumb. 
I mean, do you guys ever like experience that? Like when someone is teaching, you're just like, holy crap, like I feel really silly right now. Like I feel dumb. Like mm-hmm. you guys yeah, especially that? during this quarter where we're everything's online. Yeah. Yeah. And like he never made it seem like we had no idea what we were doing. So the way that he always taught us was, you know, we we always sat in like a semicircle or like a circle, you know, and we would all be facing each other and we would literally just have these conversations about literature um, and, you know, about teaching and our pedagogies and our philosophies and, you know, who we are as people, as teachers, you know, and we talked about having good mental hygiene, you know, not only for ourselves, but for our students. You know, if we can't be mentally fit and available for ourselves, then we can't be for our students. And, you know, even though it was an English class, that was one of the biggest things that I like took away from it. Because he's right, like even as a student, you know, we have to be, we have to have good mental hygiene. We have to be prepared and ready for our day. And if we can't do that for ourselves, how are we going to do that for our peers or even our teachers when they, you know, are working in class? And so I think it was a good takeaway. Um, I mean, that's not the only thing I learned, obviously, but <laughs> but one of the big things, you know, is we have to take care of ourselves, you know, in order to take care of a future generation that we're going to be teaching. Yeah, that's true. You know, so what good are we if we aren't taking care of ourselves? Yes, and especially since this philosophy is all revolving around letting students um feel trusted and to basically share their knowledge and not feel like they're being belittled or suggested something when in reality they should have their own opinion and that's what he encourages yeah Yeah, that's what i like loki is like he never looked down on any student you know it was a part he's as an equal Yeah. yeah that's that's something that um most like most professors don't do it's like there's a few right it's like like hey it's like not only that but like he like encourages you to perceive like what you want to do yeah to achieve those goals yeah mm-hmm. so so burns and i had had uh previously interviewed juan delgado um well, this week this last week I think it was Burns last um, Friday. It was, I think, last Friday or the Friday before that. Yeah, um, and Esther had a chance to listen in on it, and I know that you had a couple quotes that you really, really like that spoke to you, Esther. What were yeah. a couple of those? Yeah, definitely. When um, Juan was speaking to you guys, um, he mentioned that teachers um, have to be willing to think of the students as a source of knowledge for the class. As a stakeholder, they would say of knowledge, sometimes teachers only think of themselves as a stakeholder, as a, as a person who has all the information and they are going to be the bridge of that information to the student, but in complete honesty, that's a fallacy. And he brings that up and I really enjoyed and um, connected with that because I feel like a lot of professors and a lot of teachers always feel like they're the, they're the center of the class and like basically the person who keeps everything going but in reality it's the students and the students should be considered um for being that source of knowledge in the classroom and we completely understand that a teacher it has education for their education and um that's completely okay but in reality the students also have a lot of knowledge and i think that's kind of important to bring up because students are the future and as teachers and as future teachers, um, we should see that and notice that in our classrooms, students have this important part to play and we should not make them feel less or belittled just because their knowledge is something less than ours in education, further education wise. So I yeah, I think that was important to bring up because Juan brings that up and he basically mentions this because he wants us to see and to understand that the student is the um, important part there and 
they're creating their futures and we're there to help but we shouldn't just say that we're the ones that are creating their futures when in reality they're creating their own yeah yeah and he also mentioned um that trying to come up with assignments that empower the students that give the students the ability a uh, vacancy versus assignments that give the teacher the power and i thought that was pretty important too because um Burns brought up the fact that he designs his lessons or um, the way he teaches is bringing the whole class involved and involving them in their um, interests. So I thought that was pretty important as well. Do you guys feel like your pedagogies fall in line with that same kind of philosophy that Juan has, where everyone should be involved, everyone should be equal partners? Honestly, that's of yeah, that's gonna be in mine because when it comes to math, it's like most students always want to go to like find a way. Now let me let me rephrase that. Just wants to get to the correct answer. Yeah. Because I feel that. <laughs> yeah, because growing up, it's like if you don't have the right the right answer, then you're wrong, right? Yeah. It's like that's what math is, but. There's only a few of teachers that will go through the efforts like, okay, let's see your process, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, this is where you, like, where you made the mistake. Just be aware of, like, little mistakes make a big impact in math. Yeah. Right? And not only that, but there are teachers also that give out a problem and tell the students, solve it the way you think it should be solved. And that yeah. gives them the power to to lead the problem as they wish. And that's where you can see the creativity from students, which it's really rare to see creativity coming from a student. So yeah. like, this really empowers the, my, the idea of letting students take lead and working together as a group. So that's going to be added to my books. Yeah, definitely. Because in mathematics, there's always, oh, a lot of our teachers are to um, math college, even into our math series, everything was like, you just have to get the right answer. But in reality, in everything, um, sometimes the right answer isn't just the only thing you should um, analyze of a problem. It should be all these different things and we never understood that. I think it's because it's so much of just trying to look over the problem, find what's important and just put it into a formula and that's about it. And that's not what math should be about. So there yeah. should be more incorporation of the students' um, own interest and their own opinions, what they wonder, what they think. And I think that's why with all our math series classes, that opened a lot of our eyes to see math differently. And I think that was pretty amazing too. Yeah. That's the crazy part that I enjoyed getting to know Juan and stuff like that. Um, when, for example, leading to use like plugging in formulas, like it's rare. Like there's a higher chance of students just using the formula without even knowing where it comes from. Exactly. And the same thing here is like... They don't understand the concept. Yeah, it's like, what's it called? The way Juan teaches, like, here, let's see what you bring out of the concept or the information we're giving you. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because he actually wants to learn from the student. Mm -hmm. Because he sees the student as someone knowledgeable and thoughtful as anyone else in the whole world. Yeah. So do you guys think that uh, being a student right now um, with COVID on the rise, do you, do you think it's harder or easier to learn? Like for me personally, it's, it's a lot harder. I feel like um, mostly because I'm very like extroverted and I love to be around people like it just that just gets me going just being around people so going to school 
physically made a huge difference for me. Um, you know, when we were talking to Juan, he's, he said, we've been using the word social distancing, right? Yes. But what we should really be using is physical distancing because we should still all be social. Exactly. Yeah. Do you think that not being as social and not being physically in a classroom has affected your, your learning? Yeah, so you want to take a lead in this one or? Yeah, I think that it has changed so much that um, it's hard to just be looking at a screen and just um, many of our professors just um, believe that we'll just understand everything there's the same because they're just explaining it and some of them record it, some of them don't. It's just harder to put your mindset that you're in class or you're in school when you're not physically in campus. And knowing that maybe there's a room in your house where you focus on doing your work, your classwork, but that there's no um, separation between school and home and social distancing where that's, that's mentioned normally it's like such a negative contone and instead it should be physical. Like you said, it's and like Juan said, it's physical distancing. We're doing it for a reason. And instead of saying social, we should just say physical because in reality, it's physically, we're separating some two different things. Yeah. Yeah, he, he even talked about COVID-19 and education, you know, how we're all constantly sitting, looking at a screen now all day or for however long our classes are, you know, and we're just staring at screens. That's all we're doing, you know? And he, he said that for him, psychologically, it's easier to not look at a screen all day. Like he grew up listening to the radio, you know? And, and so he's, he was talking about how things have just changed. Like from when he used to listen to the radio to now, you know, like now everything is something you look at. And yeah. why does it have to be something that we're looking at, you know? And I, that's kind of why we're doing this podcast, really, because, you know, if we were to write an article, you'd have to look at a screen and read it because we can't put it in the Coyote Chronicle, you know? This is, this is something different. This is something that we can do, you can listen to while you're, you're painting. You know, Juan likes to listen to the radio and paint, or he likes to listen to podcasts and, and uh, write poetry or something. But the point is that he was trying to make was you don't have to be so invested for a period of time when you're listening to a podcast. So he's not worried that we don't have the technology for our education right now. What he's worried about is how education is going to change to help the students. And I really personally don't think that anything is really changing right now for the students um, during this time. You know, the analogous of physically being somewhere and then just socially distancing, it's completely different what we're talking about. You know, we're talking about having to sit in front of a screen all day versus getting up in class and moving around and then walking away from class and going to a different class and being around other people. Like we're just by ourselves. But when you have the opportunity to listen to a podcast or something that's just, you know, the radio or whatever, you can pause it. You can take mental breaks. You can go back to it. You can, you know, fast forward, rewind, do whatever you need to do. And still have that mentality that's healthy for you and so he fears that that education isn't really caught up yet with the technology and changing for the students and i thought that was a really interesting point that he had made because i didn't think about that i mean do you guys think about how long you sit at your computer all day yeah and now with our system we can even actually see how long we're on computers for and it's scary 
Yeah. Like, it's crazy. 10 hours, 11 hours. And we're like, wait, what? How did that even go? In reality, there's <laughs> we've been in school all day. Like, how? And then it, then you, it hits you, and you're like, I'm watching a screen all day. Yeah. And that's all I'm doing. I'm sitting down, watching a screen. And I'm it's trying crazy. to learn. It's crazy going, going to the thing because... Um, how you're saying like education hasn't caught up to technology and um, yeah it's like how are students benefiting from this at all it's like they're just seeing screens like it's insane I don't know it's like it's mind-blowing just thinking about it yeah because at right now what's going on is gonna be uh, written in the books it's gonna be history it's like how did stu like you know how did this affect students? Because bet you anything like students are struggling even more because oh, yeah. they don't have that that communication with partners and classmates and stuff like that. Yeah, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever felt this stressed about school in my life <laughs> until this quarter. <laughs> I agree with that for sure. Yeah, it's nobody's fault, you know. It's not the professor's fault. It's not. It's not anybody's fault. It's just the fact that we're at home or wherever we're at, you know, and we are isolated from other people. Mm -hmm. Like mentally, that is a hard thing when we're such social creatures, you know, as is. Yeah. That's just, that's just really mind blowing to me. With others. Yeah. And, he, you know, Juan was mentioning that us as students, we're young enough that we need to think about how this is going to affect our work and how it affects our education. You know, this is, this is something that could be a thing for a while. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I graduate this quarter. What if my teaching career from this point forward is online? What if, what if, you know, even yeah, if it's only going to be for like five years or something like that until this whole COVID thing, you know, dies down, mm -hmm. this could very well be our, our reality for the next couple of years. Yeah. So our new normal, be, what's that? Our new normal. Yeah. It's our new normal. Like we really have to learn if we haven't already how to advocate for ourselves as students so that we can take care of ourselves and in the future take care of our students because if you can't advocate for yourself you can't advocate for anybody else you know and i think that's just it's such a crazy thing to just sit on and think about yeah and i think juan opened that for sure because i wasn't thinking of that at all until i watched your guys's video and i saw that and i was like and heard it because in reality since everything started i wasn't considering that at all yeah and I, think, and I think that's what han does he makes you notice what like brent was saying it's mind-blowing because he opens your eyes to a world that you never saw before yeah yeah and i never took him as a teacher but just with that few interactions that i've had before with him and just within this um, interview that you just did with him, it opened a lot of things, especially with our education system right now, how everything's changing because of our social distancing that in reality is just physical distancing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see why, um, why we should be, should stop talking to classmates and stuff like that. Like, it's, I have a feeling that there's so few people that stop talking, talking or texting to their friends as well without even realizing it. Yeah. Because of the social distancing stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, like, that, just saying social is like, it's a big word. Like, switch it to physical is going to give a different meaning. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, humans down to their core have always had relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, they've always been in some type of unit, whether it's a family unit, unit, a school unit, you know, whatever it is, they've always been around other people. 
Definitely. Even just to cheer each other up when like in class where we're having a hard time, we're like, yeah, we got this, but we don't have that luxury anymore. We can do it through Zoom, but most of the people are more busy now because they're literally at home with their families um, doing all these other things. It's not just school anymore. Yeah. At least when we would go to school, we separated both things and we were able to um, just focus on what we needed to focus on in school and everything was fine, but now it's just, everything's blended into at home. Everything's just at home or wherever you're listening to your lecture in or wherever you're listening this to, like, it's just, you're at home. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a good challenge to present to anyone who listens to this podcast, you know, as we finish up here, you know, we'd, we'd like to challenge you guys to continue to be social just physically distance, you know, and if you need that help, reach out, you know, or if you want to talk to someone, reach out to them. There's no reason that we shouldn't be social with others, uh, especially during this time. It's vital. And so, you know, let us know uh, how you guys are doing out there in the virtual world. We'd love to hear from you guys here at the PALS office. Um, well, once again, I'm Jesse. And, and I'm Esther. I'm Burns. And thanks for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Deuces. <laughs>